We uh, felt the truck come to a stop. We felt it back up. We felt it stop again, and we heard the three knocks. The door flew up, and as practiced, we hustled out. We carried with us a seven-foot-tall wooden bridge that we'd spent much of the previous week building. Vic and I sat down. We chained our necks to the bridge, and just like that, we blocked the driveway to Spectre Energy's compressor station in Cromwell, Connecticut. A worker pulled in, and he stopped his car. He looked confused because he couldn't get by. And above the bridge, protesters held a banner that said, <coughs> fracked gas is a bridge to nowhere. Now, that banner referred to President Obama and Governor Malloy's claim, their rather absurd claim, that fracked gas is a bridge fuel to renewables. Well, we see it as more of a roadblock. Because first of all, if you're looking specifically at the contribution of climate change, fracked gas is worse than coal. And anybody who wants to dispute me on that uh, should, should tell me, because I'll send them the studies, uh, including one by Robert Howard that document that clearly. Uh, furthermore, any investment in gas is an investment that should be going to renewables, to community-owned wind, solar, uh, efficiency conservation. Uh, now, our action, um, it, it, it's working because it's in the context of a broader campaign that uses a whole bunch of tactics. There are people in New York State, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts that are collecting petition signatures, that are passing counter resolutions, that are lobbying their public officials, are writing op-eds, are building floats in parades, are going door-to-door -door canvassing. Um, you know, but, but I'm trying to make the case that taking direct action has a place in these campaigns. Vic and I, uh, the two people that were arrested, we're from two different generations. He is 74 and I am 25. We're both concerned that capitalism and hierarchy itself endanger humanity and life on Earth. Capitalism dangerously requires infinite growth on a finite planet. Now, if a firm wants to uh, stay in business, it's got to keep growing. If it doesn't keep growing, it can't realize economies of scale, it can't buy the latest technologies, it can't update its technologies, and it gets squeezed out of the market by competitors. Now, under current modern-day capitalism, things get even worse as these businesses exert unprecedented control over politics. They start giving orders to regulatory agencies like the EPA. They start directing wars over the control of oil. And uh, so, so things get even worse. They bail out Wall Street banks so that uh, money keeps on flowing to companies that exploit the coal fields. Now, if saving humanity is one of our goals, then we have an extremely irrational society. Spectre's pipeline expansion project would bring flammable methane gas less than 1,500 feet from the Indian Point nuclear power plant in Buchanan, New York. Again, Spectre Energy is a company that we, we protested in December. The nuclear engineer Paul Blanche, who lives in Connecticut, says that a pipeline explosion by the Indian Point plant could trigger, this is a quote from him, spent fuel radioactive releases exceeding those of Fukushima. So I don't need to tell you that that's a bad idea. Vic and I are both, we're both living in Middletown in 2010 when the clean energy, that was the name of the power plant, a uh, clean energy gas plant exploded, killing six workers. And we've known since then that fracked gas is deadly. This compressor station in Cromwell is located a quarter mile away from Cromwell Middle School and 100 feet away from recreational fields at Wastrus Park. Now, according to the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, right now, this compressor station is a major source of hazardous air pollutants. And now, as part of this project, the company wants to expand it. The pipe, the uh, compressor station pollutants are linked with kidney and liver damage, lung damage, brain impacts, leukemia, and more. So, Vic and I decided that it was high time to take action together, to put our bodies in the way. After all, this is a social system that blocks a livable future for us. So in order to protect our future, we need to block the system. I said at the time, if the authorities don't stop Spectre's pipeline expansion, then we will be back with more people and more resolve to stop it ourselves. Eventually, the police showed up. They said if we did not unlock ourselves, we would be arrested. We refused to unlock ourselves. They unlocked us. They asked us to stand up, we refused to stand up. We didn't actively resist, but we went limp. 
They dragged us away from the bridge, handcuffed us, and lifted us to, into the police cars. Now, this may seem extreme, but I want to ask you, what else should I do as a 25-year-old? I, what else am I to do when I read in the newspapers this past week that we passed four planetary boundaries? Deforestation, species extinction, climate change, and nitrogen cycle disruption. What else am I to do when I go to the People's Climate March and I see 400,000 people marching in front of me and behind me, and that's really inspiring, but then I had a pretty disturbing thought. According to the Climate Vulnerability Forum, 400,000 is, is also the number of people that die every year from climate change impacts. Uh, in, increased hurricane intensity, vector-borne diseases, heat waves. This is a 2012 study. 98% of these 400,000 deaths happening right now every year occur in the global south, in communities that did nothing to cause the climate crisis but are suffering the brunt of the damage. All right, so I'm going to try to move to something more hopeful. <laughs> um, I'm part of a group, Capitalism versus the Climate. We find a lot of hope in history. We can learn from Germany, where people have organized against nuclear power and for renewable energy for decades. And they've succeeded in phasing out nuclear energy. And right now, about 15% of their electricity comes from wind and solar. Uh, from the wind and solar. That, that is hopeful. We can learn from Denmark, where community-owned wind sprang up around the country in the 1970s and the 1980s. We can learn from the anti-nuclear movement right here in this country. In the 70s, thousands of people went to jail for justice, and they succeeded in bringing national attention uh, to the nuclear issue. And with some help from the Three Mile Island disaster, uh, they succeeded in blocking many, many nuclear plants. No new nuclear plants have, built, have been built since 1974. And from 1977 to 2013, no nuclear reactors were built at existing plants either. We can learn from the Zapatistas in Chiapas, Mexico, who built a direct democratic society of up to 300,000 people. They have plenty of oil under the ground, and they could have gotten rich by extracting it, but they decided to keep the oil in the ground where it belongs. We find hope in the fact that there are thousands of solutions. Community-owned wind and solar, Zero waste policies, small scale farming, participatory decision making, uh, which has been put into place thousands of times throughout history, from classical Athens to revolutionary Spain to New England town meetings to Occupy Wall Street. And you can find out lots more information of these solutions at our website, capitalismversusclimate.org and anarchyinaction.org, which is a, wi a wiki describing hundreds of horizontally organized societies, communities, movements, and organizations. Now, I also find hope, paradoxically enough, in one of capitalism's worst tendencies. And, and that is the fact that capitalism is becoming increasingly reliant on what the security and peace expert Michael Clare calls extreme energy in his book, The Race for What's Left. Because of the depleting conventional sources, the capitalists are becoming more and more dependent on extreme sources. Mountaintop removal for coal, fracking for gas, offshore drilling for oil. Right? This is all terrible. But it, sh it shows that uh, without the constant flow of energy, no matter what, uh, the system can't keep on running, and they're forced to rely on these increasingly unpopular and expensive sources. Now, now replacing the system is daunting, uh, but blocking extreme energy seems a little bit more doable. So I, I want to argue that focusing on extreme energy is a strategic focus for the left. The journalist Naomi Klein writes about Blockadia, which is a global movement of blockades against extreme energy, from the tar sands blockade in Texas, to farmers' blockades against Chevron in Romania, to the Micmac struggle against fracking in New Brunswick, to flood Wall Street in New York. Uh, I guess I don't have time for this right now, but in the question and answer, I'd love to talk about how my group in Connecticut played a role in getting UBS to, to back away from funding mountaintop removal coal mining. And this was a major victory against extreme energy, and it shows that uh, direct action when combined with community organizing tactics can really make a difference. I'm proud of the role that we played in uh, campaigning against the Keystone XL pipeline. A few years ago, this looked like a done deal. And thanks to people mobilizing around the country, uh, around the world, really, um, it still hasn't been built. It's been delayed and delayed, and recent statements by the president uh, make it seem likely that he's going to reject it. Uh, so to conclude, we in Connecticut can make a very serious contribution to the global movement for climate justice. After all, we have Wall Street bankers living in Connecticut, 
and we can put notices up in their country clubs and churches saying it's time for them to stop funding extreme energy. We can uh, use the state's resources to fund clean renewable energy and conservation, and we can cause an important national precedent by demanding the payment of ecological debt to Bridgeport and other ecologically exploited communities. We can team up with other movements, Labor, Black Lives Matter, Palestine, uh, other movements that are making a real difference. And uh, I have some other ideas I'll talk about in the question and answer period, but I'm going to be passing around this Pledge of Resistance. And hopefully you can uh, fill it out and then give it back to me. You don't have to get arrested to make a difference to be a part of the struggle, I promise you that. Uh, we do need a lot of people to uh, campaign against Spectre's expansion. And, and let's not be afraid, finally, to use the most powerful weapons we have. Our words, our actions, our creativity, our courage, our resistance. Let's fight as hard as we can with the knowledge that we may very well have to choose between <laughs> extinction and ecotopia, between annihilation and anarchy, between capitalism and the climate.